This is a special day that the Lord's made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. That's pretty good. With these masks on, I wondered if they're taking all the joy out of this day. Let's hope not. This is a big, great day. Welcome to the 138th year in which students and families just like you have gathered together for the commencement exercises of Bellhaven University. This is a long-awaited day to recognize the accomplishments of these graduates, and the journey you began several years ago comes to completion with this ceremony, but it's not simply the accomplishment of this degree that we celebrate today, but the start of a new phase of your life. And with this new beginning go the prayers of our Board of Trustees, faculty, and administration. For a while, we weren't sure if we'd make this path to your education complete with the pandemic going on, but we made it, and you made it. And we know that there are lots of smiles behind those masks, but to protect us all, would you all, we would appreciate you keeping your masks on until you're outside the building at the end of commencement. Well, we're here to celebrate the completion of your degree, but we also celebrate through these past two years how everyone on campus has worked together to make it through these extraordinary times. And I want to say to our students, we ask a lot of you to follow the Bellhaven promise while on campus this year, to work with all the restrictions and the distancing and the testing and the limitations, and you did great. And I just want you to know how much I personally appreciate it. Now, education is the interaction that takes place between you and your professors. And so, as you graduate, we honor this outstanding group of faculty who have pushed and pulled and stretched and challenged you to become your very best. And gathered here are your family and friends and supporters, because you did not get to this place alone. It's through their encouragement, prayers, and sacrifice you've achieved this important goal. And as you know, graduates, the mission of Bellhaven University is to prepare students academically and spiritually to serve Christ Jesus in their careers, in human relationships, and in the world of ideas. I pray you'll be alumni who live lives worthy of that mission and of our campus motto to serve, not to be served. Dr. Stephen Phillips, professor of history and political science, is going to lead us in our opening prayer of celebration for this service of commencement. And as he prays, we join together in celebrating the lives and the accomplishments of the graduates of Bellhaven University class of 2021. Let's join in prayer. O Lord, our God, we come to thee humbly, beseeching thy favor. O you ruler of the nations and redeemer of men through our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, as we have sought to teach our students. We know that you have good plans ahead for all of those here who seek you with all their hearts. But we also acknowledge that we are frail as the fading grass. We pray that you bless the work of Bellhaven University you bless these graduates and their families, and that you teach us to number our days, that we might get a heart full of wisdom. We all, we pray this in the name of our glorious Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I don't have a friend I know or know of a leader anywhere who better exemplifies Bellhaven's motto to serve, not to be served, more than does our commencement speaker today. Reverend Jasper Bacon is so gifted he could have done most anything. He's an insightful leader, a gifted speaker, creative problem solver, and a deep thinker. He was born and raised in Canton, Mississippi, and after earning his degree at Wheaton College in Chicago, he returned home to serve the community where God had planted him. And just like that image from the book of Jeremiah, Reverend Bacon became a tree with deep roots. As the scripture says, such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never never stop producing fruit. That has been the life of Jasper Bacon and In His Steps Ministries. He and his wife Carolyn and their team have been constantly producing fruit for the kingdom through three decades. And we're fortunate that during nearly all those years, Reverend Bacon has taught a course at Bellhaven. It's remarkable the influence a leader can garner when they stay in one place for a very long time. And Reverend Bacon has reach has extended into thousands and thousands of families where he's taught on racial reconciliation, marriage, family, parenting skills, evangelism, and discipleship while serving the Canton community through intervention, prevention, and Christian community-based services. Sharing the gospel must be both word and deed, and the biblical model is exactly what Jasper and Carolyn Bacon have lived out. And Carolyn, we're glad that you're here today with your family, and we want to, as we recognize Jasper for a lifetime of service, we know that this also is recognizing you. And would you and your family stand so we can thank you because of all you've done for In His Steps ministry? It wouldn't be possible without this marvelous family. As our commencement speaker today and to receive from Bellhaven University the honorary degree, Doctor of Christian Ministries, please welcome a, a, a man who has been a model of servant leadership, an advocate for the overlooked, and a champion for the gospel of Jesus Christ, Dr. Jasper Bacon. This indeed is a marvelous day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I like what the psalmist said. The psalmist says, I will, blessed are those who trust 
in the Lord. Dr. Parrott, I appreciate you. You'll never know just how much I appreciate you. As I was preparing for today's message, uh, a scripture out of Galatians chapter 1, verse 5 came to mind. And that verse says, to God be the glory forever and ever. To God be the glory forever and ever. Again, Dr. Parrott, thank you for your leadership of this great institution. Thank you for your encouragement and inspiration over the years. Thank you for this opportunity. This indeed is an honor, it's a privilege, and it's very humbling to my family. My heart is warm to be here, but to have you here with me. Thank you for being here. All of my grandchildren know that I love them, but my oldest, from a very little thing, wanted a t-shirt with Theology Matters on it. Now, I don't know where that's going. I don't know what God has in store. But Christian, maybe you'll be the next one standing up here. To others, to our distinguished guest, and of course to you, the graduates, families, and all others who are represented here today. Graduates, this is your day. We celebrate you for your hard work. Having been a professor adjunct here, I know that you're happy to have all of the uh, uh, group meetings behind you and wondering which professor is going to let you out early. And the list goes on and on. We applaud you for a job well done. God has something in store for you all. During your time here, your professors have worked hard to prepare you for this day and thereafter. Much has been said about living life from a Christian worldview. Have you heard that a few times? You have been instructed on the importance of looking at everything through the lens of Scripture. You have been challenged to carefully consider what ultimate reality is, to see the Bible as the absolute truth and final authority on salvation and all other daily living. You've been challenged to integrate your faith into your daily living. I believe you're prepared. As you transition back into your various callings, as you commence into your next phase of your journey, we pause for a moment today to consider a passage of scripture out of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 18. And allow me to read that passage in your hearing. It states, See then, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, wherein is dissipation but be filled with the Spirit of God. What a word, you all. What a word to pause and consider as you commence today. This particular passage of Scripture is couched in the book of Ephesians. Some have rightfully said that the book of Ephesians is divided into two sections. The first section deals with doctrine or what God has done for us. And then the second part, starting in chapter 4, deals with responsibility or practical living. 
And so therefore, we have a, a section of scripture that speaks to us about how we ought to live if we have claimed the name of Jesus. Our section of the second half of the book of Ephesians introduces that section with a word. That word is the word walk. The word walk is one of Paul's favorite words. He uses that word at least five times in the book of Ephesians. And if you're noticing, I'm trying to be very careful here because I have at least uh, two Bible professors behind me back here. <laughs> and, and I know they are may, wanting to make sure I, I, I do everything line up on line. And so uh, I'm only kidding. My good friend is here. We've talked together. But Paul uses the word walk quite a bit in the letter of Ephesians. For instance, in chapter 4, verse 1, don't forget it. He says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. In other words, Paul starts off by saying it's very important for your talk to match your walk. If you say that you love Jesus, it ought to be that the way you live proves that you love Jesus. But then also he uses the word walk again in chapter 4, verse 17, where he says, this, say, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer, negative, no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds. And, and you know that we have some folks who live and carry themselves in the fertility of their minds. It's not what God says, what God's will is. And, and so Paul says, don't do that. You are a believer. Don't act like the Gentiles act. But then also in chapter 5, verse 1, Paul says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. I heard someone say that we are talking a lot about making America great again. It may be that we might want to say, Lord, make America kind again. We as believers. We as believers. The Bible says we are to imitate our Father and we are to walk in love. And then we come to our passage today in chapter 5, verse 15. He uses a word here that we don't use very often, the word circumspectly. The word circumspectly, and we'll get to that word in just, in just a little bit. But before I get to my outline, before I get to the, the points, the things that God has put on my heart to share with you, I need to remind you of the world that you're entering back into. Graduates, as we talk about living a circumspect life, I need you to remember that we're living in a time where truth has been exchanged for a lie where we tend to worship and serve the creator, the creature, excuse me, more than the creator. A time where, as Isaiah says, justice has been driven back and truth has fallen to the ground. Where it seems that the righteous person, as the psalmist says, has ceased to exist. Where's the righteous man? Many ask. We're living in a time where the landmarkers have been moved, a time where er everything is either relative or situational and truth is subjective in the eyes of the beholder. These are critical and dangerous times that we're living in. We're witnessing situations where people are most unloving. Let me say that again, a time where people are most unloving most unforgiving, without self-control, and even unapologetic about it. Brutal, hearty about it. Having a form of godliness where many worship God with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. This is the world 
that you are reentering. God is looking for Christian. God is looking for graduates from Bell Haven. Individuals. God is looking for Christians. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro through the earth, through the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. God is looking for somebody who would say, here am I. I will stand up and be counted. I won't be afraid to raise my hand and say, I don't agree with that. I won't be afraid to walk across the aisle and say, you may not like me, but I still love you. God is looking for someone like that. The modern church has become a free-flowing marketplace of ideals with not, not much attention to truth. When it comes to what and whom you believe, are we equipped to accurately unravel what's right and wrong? Over a quarter of a century ago, the late apologist and Christian thinker, Francis Schaeffer, asked the question, how should we then live in his book by the same title? That question, you all, is still very much relevant for us today. How should we then live as children of God? The Bible does speak very clearly about our Christian responsibility. And I love what I just read somewhere where it says, when it comes to how then should we live, it might be boiled down to one simple thing. It may boil down to managing and governing of our own character. We can make a difference if we learn how to manage our own character, govern our own character. Our society has taken a nosedive, you all, and we don't, we're not pessimists, we're optimists because we believe God has a calling on you all, and you all are heading back out, and you will be lights in the world. To our subject matter today, yes, God would have us to live circumspectly. The idea there, as the NIV puts it, we're to live carefully in a world gone wrong. If you notice in our passage, it reads, not as fools. There's a contrast here we've tried to help you to see. Not as fools. A fool is not named because of his intellectual limitations. Let me say that again. Uh, Fools are not named because of their intellectual limitations, but because of his unbelief, self-centeredness, senselessness, rashness, egotistic approach to life. And I do not mean to offend anyone, but I believe we all would agree that there are some intelligent fools. A fool is one who carries on as if there is no God. I, I've done ministry in the, in the juvenile detention centers with young boys incarcerated for at least 26 years. And so youngsters come to me sometime and, and they, they mirror, mirror adults. And they, they try me, they, they ask silly questions and, and sometimes they say, I don't believe in God. And so I say to them sometimes, I say, well, young man, you say you don't believe in God. Would you mind if I pray for you? And he says, you can do whatever you want to do. I don't believe in God. And so I proceed and I say in my little prayer, Father in heaven, this young man says that he doesn't believe in you. Would you strike him dead right now? <laughs> and all of a sudden, he says, oh, don't pray that prayer. <laughs> sometimes, you all, sometimes. There are so many reasons why we Christians ought to live carefully. One, 
we're representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Two, when we live carefully under the power of the Holy Spirit, it gives evidence that Christ is real. Three, it draws people to Christ by our lives. As my pastor often says, he says, do evangelize and only use words when necessary. My mom, and as I thought about this morning, I began to weep while I was laying on my bed, on my bed this morning. Mom only finished the fourth grade. Mom grew up as a sharecropper. Mom, on occasions, would send me, while at Alabama A&M on a football scholarship, she would send me $3, $5. She'd send me a care package, and some of y'all remember what potted meat is, potted meat and crackers. And, and see, you sophisticated folks don't know what potted meat is. And so afterwards, you get with me, and I'll let you know what potted meat is. And so, but, but she would send me the $3 and the $5, and she would say to me, as best as she could write it out, she would say, Son, I love you. She would say, son, don't quit. I'm still here, you all. God is good. God is good. Living life circumspectly. But then also of a passage, it spoke to the fact or it speaks to the fact that we are to take advantage of God-given opportunities. You've heard the expression that tomorrow's not promised. As a matter of fact, the next minute, the next moment is not promised. The Bible says that if we're going to live circumspectly, we need to learn how to redeem the time because the days are evil. The word redeem, we know the word redeem, it means to buy up to buy out of. Time is a gift from God, you all, and none of us knows how much of it we are allotted. The, time, the, the, the term time here, it means a fixed, measured, allocated season that God has allotted us. Paul is calling Christians to use their time well so that they might make the most of every opportunity. One, to demonstrate God's love to others. Don't let the opportunity pass to stir up love among people. There's too much hatred. But then also to take advantage or redeem the time to be able to work together as the body of Christ. to present the gospel to those who may not know the Lord. If you're around me long enough, I'm, I will get around to lovingly telling you about how Christ saved me. And eventually I'm going to get around to asking you if you have ever met the Lord. I have a dear friend, he's gone home to be with the Lord, and as he was on his dying bed, the story is told, and it's a true story, that he knew he was on his way into eternity. And so therefore, he put a, 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 a sheet of paper on his door at the hospital room. And on that sheet of paper, it said to all who choose to visit, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you may have five minutes with me. To those of you who don't know the Lord, you may have 15 minutes with me. In other words, he un understood the importance of buying up every opportunity. I recall as an adjunct professor here at Bell Haven teaching the kingdom life workplace in the family class. The last night, as you all remember, you have the final presentation and you have to line up your callings. God being first and then uh, marriage and then family and then church and et cetera, et cetera. And then you had to explain how each of these callings have been impactful how God has spoken to you about your various callings and I never shall forget a young lady maybe 28 mid 20s or so she got up to do her presentation 
And she began to weep as she began to do her presentation. And she said to the class, oh, the only thing I regret, regret is that I ha did not have an opportunity to live out this with my husband. She said he was killed in a car accident soon after we were married. The Bible says learn to take advantage of the opportunities. I never will forget, I had another young lady in my class and, and, I, and, and I tended to use Christian tracts during devotion one of which was the four spiritual laws, and I would go through that with my classes and what have you. And this particular time, uh, I gave each one a, a four spiritual laws, and it was, I bet it was six, seven months later, I was there teaching another class, and I heard someone calling my name. Young lady said, hey, Reverend Bacon, Reverend Bacon. And she came running down, and she said, Reverend Bacon, I want you to know that track you gave me. I was sitting on my back porch, and I gave my life to Jesus, taking advantage of the opportunities. But then also our passage tells us that we are not only to live circumspectly and take advantage of the opportunities that we have, but our passage tells us we are to understand the will of the Lord. It doesn't matter to me what you say about me, what matters to me is what God says about me. As someone once said that I would rather stand with God and be judged by people than to stand with people and be judged by God. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Sometimes we make things too complicated, you all. The Bible clearly states in Ephesians, especially it tells us who we are. It calls us saints, those who have been set apart in chapter 1. But then it calls us the saved ones. It calls us those who are in Christ. It calls us children of God. It calls us children of light. Now to us, as my mom would always say, she would say, I cannot control what happens in somebody else's house. She says, but as for those in my house, she wasn't a big woman, y'all. She's about this big. She wasn't a big woman now. But all four of her children knew you didn't cross her. And she said, as we would have a chance sometimes, I'm going to date myself, Dr. Perry. She would say sometimes, living close to Pickens, Mississippi. I know most of y'all know where Pickens, Mississippi is. I come, I'll tell you where it is. Just come see me. But it had one one grocery store and one hardware and one everything. It all was in one store. But at that store, they, she would take us to pick in Mississippi and give us a dime. And at that time, we could get two for a penny cookies. Now, I know I dated myself there, right? Two for a penny big cookies. Big lemon cookies. Big coconut cookies. And, 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 and mom would say to us, she let us roam around that two-store town. And she would say, just before you leave, don't forget what your last name is. You know what I stopped by to tell you? As you commence, don't forget what your first name is. Your first name is Christian. If I, if I felt that I had the liberty to say it, I would say that you're not a black person before you're Christian. If I had the liberty to say it. If I had the liberty to say it, I would say you're not a white person or a Democrat or a Republican before you're Christian. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we getting this thing twisted. And we running around talking, about, I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do. The Bible clearly states what to do. Remember who you are and then do what the Bible says do, being who you are. It's that simple. And I'm not trying to be ugly, you all, but I think y'all hear my heart, right? right? But understanding the will of God, you all, it comes with a cost. Now, let me tell you. One, it requires spiritual discernment. 
And the Bible says that if you don't have Jesus in your life, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says the natural man don't, doesn't receive the things of God, right? They are spiritually discerned. He's blind to them. You, you, you need to come and give your life to Jesus in order to understand what we're talking about here, right? But then also it requires discipline time in the Word of God. Earlier this morning, you all, I had pulled out one of my new Bibles. I got a lot of new Bibles, right? But all my notes in this Bible. And I said to myself, I hate to go up there in front of Dr. Parrott with this Bible. I, I looked at it. And all them professors sitting back there got tape on it. They're going to say, that man can't even <laughs> afford a Bible. <laughs> but then I, I, I thought, this Bible has my notes. It has things marked in it. You see, if you want to understand the will of God, you got to spend some, what did I say? We got, it's going to require discipline, discipline time in the Word of God. Someone once said, if, if your old Bible is falling apart, your life is not going to be falling apart. But if your life is falling apart, more than likely, the Bible is going to be intact, you all. But it also requires determined obedience. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to obey God. It requires you and I regulating our lives according to it. It requires you and I to think critically about everything. When this movement was, was, was hot, I, I had a, a number of folks to come to me on both sides, and they said, well, why are you, are you, you, you doing that? And I said, I, I told them, I said, well, my good friend, what I do is not because of a movement. What I do is because of the mandates of Scripture. Case closed. As I get older, I don't have, I don't have the energy to argue with you about that. I got more important things to do. My life, I want to be, it to be regulated around the mandates of Scripture. But then lastly, the, uh, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he knew that verse 19 was kind of the capstone. And, and let me read it, uh, get, read it to you. We know it. We all know it so well. Verse 18. This is a capstone. It's like the, the bookend. The bookend. As a matter of fact, everything that's going to be said afterwards concerning parenting and concerning marriage and, and, and civil obedience and all of those kind of things, that we, it all hinges on whether or not we understand verse 18. It says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. There's another contrast. You can be drunk with wine. In other words, you can be carried along by wine, uh, strong drinks, and you've seen that type of thing happen before. That's dissipation. It says, but, there's our word, be filled with the Spirit of God. If we want to see a revival in our land, if we want to see revival in our church, if we want to see revival in homes, it must start with believers. We can't expect unsaved folks to handle this. We must, as believers, say to the Holy Spirit of God, fill me. Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life. This verse speaks to a command. The command is, is an eternal, it is an internal reality. It's a constant of reality. It's available to Christians. It's a continuous, ongoing thing that God wants us to possess and, and own. To be filled is to be permeated or under the control of the Holy Spirit. In a number of places, we see men who were controlled by the Holy Spirit. Men like Stephen. Men like Peter in the book of Acts, where they said, it doesn't matter what you say, I, we must obey God. The filling of the Holy Spirit. Well, when there's a filling of the Holy Spirit, you look at the verses right after it, where you'll see 
three things anytime you or I are filled with the Holy Spirit. First of all, there will be a worshipful attitude, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, etc. But then also there will be a joyful, a worshipful and joyful attitude, but then there will be a thankful attitude in all things giving thanks, right? But then lastly, there will be a submissive spirit. Hear me good. When the Holy Spirit is controlling your life and my life, it says submitting one to another. It's in the Bible, y'all. Submitting one to another. As I close, I'm thinking of one instance. One instance. Something I read recently. Did you not know that the way you walk says a whole lot about you? I didn't realize it, but there, you know, there are some folks out there who don't have anything else to do than to study how people walk, whether they walk soft or whether they walk hard. And, and they make drawn conclusions about it. Well, I was reading an article recently, and it said this. It says, you still might be under the, under the impression that only the way you dress or the way you talk is what people judge you on. Then it's time you change your belief. According to studies based on, listen to this, human psychology and personality traits, your walking style reveals a lot about your personality. I never knew that. I wonder what mine is. <laughs> These studies also say that the way you walk, including speed, tells a lot about your personality trait. Did you know that, Dr. Perry? I knew that. I know Dr. Perry already knew that, right? <laughs> but, but listen to this. A fast pace is linked to higher levels of consciousness and openness. Uh, it reveals kind of the researcher's mentality. And it goes on to, to talk about those who walk with heavy stomping, the cautious walkers, those who drag their feet. Someone has studied it, and it says something about you and your personality. But more so than that, the way that you and I carry ourselves as Christians says a whole lot about us. The Bible has made it very plain, you all, that love is the key. As a matter of fact, put it this way. They, whoever the they is, they will know that we are Christians by the love that we have one for another. May God bless you as you commence back into your calling. Would all the graduates please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the class of 2021-2022. On behalf of the faculty of Belhaven University and as vice president of academic affairs and provost of the university, I hereby certify that these candidates, upon completion of all requirements, have successfully achieved their degrees. We therefore recommend that the Board of Trustees confer upon each of them the appropriate degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities these degrees imply. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Belhaven University, and the charter granted by the state of Mississippi, I hereby confer these degrees upon you, the class of 2021-2022.
May God bless you. Will the first row of graduates please come forward? The other rows may now be seated. In a moment, Dr. Smith is going to call the names of each of these graduates as they come across the platform, beginning with our doctoral students. And as he calls those names, we know that these students do not cross this platform alone. They are here and they've made it because of families who have stood with them in this journey. Yeah. Parents, moms and dads, husbands, wives, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, extended family, you are part of this journey as well. And friends who've come for them, we want to honor you as well. So when your graduate's name is called by Dr. Smith, would you, the friends and family of that student, would you just stand where you are and remain standing as they come across the platform? And that'll give us a chance to honor you as well, and it'll give you a chance to get a much better picture. Christina D. Henderson, Doctor of Education. Heather Lacoste, Doctor of Education. Anita Prentice, Doctor of Education. Deidre Robinson, Doctor of Education. Rabishandran Ayapan, Education Specialist. <laughs> Sheila Hodge, Education Specialist. <laughs> Julie A. Ingram, Education Specialist. Olivia A. Knight, Education Specialist. Kiba L. Smith, Education Specialist. Michaela Anderson, Master of Arts in Teaching. Derek C. Baker, Master of Arts in Teaching. <laughs> Brittany D. Ballard, Master of Arts in Teaching. <laughs> Shamika Blakeney, Master of Arts in Teaching. Christy Bither, Master of Arts in Teaching. Cammie N. Cox, Master of Education. Chandra Daniels Lofton, Master of Arts in Teaching. Alan M. Davis, Master of Education in Reading Literacy. Patrick Edmond, Master of Arts in Teaching. Antoinette Franklin, Master of Arts in Teaching. Damika R. Garrett, Master of Arts in Teaching. Jordan S. Gilmer, Master of Education. Tempest Gilmore, Master of Arts in Teaching.
Delmetric Gaudi, Master of Arts in Teaching. Chambrel Shante Nicole Griffin, Master of Arts in Teaching. Deandra Harris, Master of Arts in Teaching. Lashana N. Hendricks, Master of Arts in Teaching. Haley M. Herndon, Master of Education. Jarvis Jackson, Master of Arts in Teaching. Chadrika M. Johnson, Master of Arts in Teaching. Melody R. Lewis, Master of Arts in Teaching. Caressa Marshall, Master of Arts in Teaching. Brittany Martin, Master of Arts in Teaching. Tanisha McCarty, Master of Education in Reading Literacy. Daphne C. McNair, Master of Arts in Teaching. Alicia A. Moore, Master of Arts in Teaching. Damita Morgan, Master of Arts in Teaching. Quanisha D. Murray, Master of Education in Reading Literacy. Brianna Nash, Master of Education. Francesca M. Powell, Master of Arts in Teaching. Katrina Y. Reese, Master of Arts in Teaching. Travis Reed, Master of Education. Deanna R. Richardson, Master of Education in Reading Literacy. Summer Richardson, Master of Education in Reading Literacy. Chastity D. Robertson, Master of Arts in Teaching. Jocelyn Jackson Robinson, Master of Arts in Teaching. Carrie A. Smith, Master of Education. Fikea Smith, Master of Arts in Teaching. Anisha S. Stamps, Master of Arts in Teaching. De'Aaron Stewart, Master of Arts in Teaching. Martha Talent, Master of Education. Jeffrey Taylor, Master of Arts in Teaching. Latasha A. Thurman, Master of Education.
Wakinta S. Watts, Master of Arts in Teaching. Today, Asia L. Williams, Master of Arts in Teaching. <laughs> Santia J. Yates, Master of Arts in Teaching. Lisa G. Hellier, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Chauncey Leon Jordan, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. <laughs> Joseph King, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. <laughs> Charles S. McLean, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Portia R. Moore, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Richard M. Self, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. William L. Thompson, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Skyla Wilson, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Leanne Bethany, Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies. Cassidy N. Ainsworth, Bachelor of Arts, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Lavonda C. Allen, Bachelor of Science. Mindy F. Amos, Bachelor of Business Administration, Cum Laude. Bryant D. Anderson, Bachelor of Science in Management, Cum Laude. Robert C. Atwell, Bachelor of Arts. Charles W. Ballou, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Eric Barber, Bachelor of Business Administration. Raquel Barber, Bachelor of Business Administration, cum laude. Michael L. Bonds, Bachelor of Science. Tanya Michelle Bridges, Bachelor of Science in Accounting, cum laude. Brittany D. Brown, Bachelor of Business Administration. Sharon L. Bryant, Bachelor of Health Administration. Michelle Brown, Bachelor of Business Administration, summa cum laude. John C. Byers, Bachelor of Arts, summa cum laude. Rachelle Chisholm, Batch Chisholm, Bachelor of Social Work.
D'Angelo Martel Coleman, Bachelor of Arts. Desiree A. Coleman, Bachelor of Health Administration. Caroline R. Davenport, Bachelor of Arts, magna cum laude. Mackie Jo Dennis, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies, summa cum laude. William H. Dewberry III, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. April G. Durr, Bachelor of Health Administration. Siobhan L. Edwards, Bachelor of Science in Management. Wankithia Y. Edwards, Bachelor of Arts, cum laude. Sojourner Evans, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Knox E. Everett, Bachelor of Science, magna cum laude. Kiera S. Fair, Bachelor of Arts, cum laude. Justin M. Fawcett, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies with Honors. <laughs> Cynthia Farrell, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Connor D. Fordham, Bachelor of Arts, cum laude. Lakesia Francis, Bachelor of Business Administration, cum laude. Taylor Fry, Bachelor of Science. Christy L. Friary Ulmer, Bachelor of Business Administration, cum laude. Madison A. Gibbs, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Leslie C. Go Golden, Bachelor of Business Administration, magna cum laude. <laughs> Nathaniel Gomez, Bachelor of Science in Management, summa cum laude. Sarah A. Gwynn, Bachelor of Fine Arts, summa cum laude. <laughs> Alfred Hawkins, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. Charlotte Henderson, Bachelor of Business Administration, cum laude. Vanessa Patton Henderson, Bachelor of Health Administration. <laughs> Tyann R. Hubbard, Bachelor of Health Administration. <laughs> Yeji Lin, Bachelor of Arts. Brandon L. Jackson, Bachelor of Business Administration, summa cum laude. <laughs> Princess R. Jackson, Bachelor of Science in Management. <laughs> Stephanie E. Jarrett, Bachelor of Arts.
Annie Johnson, Bachelor of Business Administration with honors. <laughs> Tiffany J. Johnson, Bachelor of Arts in Social Services, cum laude. Yumi Choi, Bachelor of Fine Arts, magna cum laude. <laughs> Joseph M. Jones, Bachelor of Arts. John Frederick Jerfitz, Bachelor of Business Administration, cum laude. Anna T. Leonard, Bachelor of Fine Arts. <laughs> Dahlia J. Lewis, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Jessica Ann Mahaf Mahaffey, Bachelor of Business Administration, magna cum laude. Arkeela McDonald, Bachelor of Arts. Danielle M. Moss, Bachelor of Arts, summa cum laude. Sherry R. Noblet, Bachelor of Health Administration, magna cum laude. Benjamin J. Owens, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. <laughs> Valerie Payton, Bachelor of Health Administration. <laughs> Charles R. Piggies, Bachelor of Science. Belinda Pendleton, Bachelor of Health Administration, magna cum laude. Gail Percy Jackson, Bachelor of Arts. Brandon T. Phillips, Bachelor of Science. Angela Price, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Kaylee M. Price, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, cum laude. <laughs> Raven S. Rembert, Bachelor of Arts. Seth W. Ritchie, Bachelor of Business Administration, summa cum laude. Lasagna M. Robbins, Bachelor of Arts. Shannon N. Royal, Bachelor of Business Administration, magna cum laude. Sierra L. Rucker, Bachelor of Arts in Social Services, magna cum laude. <laughs> Shamsi C. Ruffin, Bachelor of Business Administration, magna cum laude. <laughs> Austin C. Russell, Bachelor of Science. Ebony Selvi, Bachelor of Arts, magna cum laude. Amber Shelley, Bachelor of Arts. Tammy T. Sims, Bachelor of Social Work, cum laude.
Ashley Spears, Bachelor of Arts. Angel L. Steve, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Noah A. Stonecipher, Bachelor of Arts, summa cum laude. Barbara J. Taylor, Bachelor of Arts, magna cum laude. Shanda D. Thompson, Bachelor of Science in Management. Anna K. Thornton, Bachelor of Arts, Honors Fellow, summa cum laude. Brittany Tillman, Bachelor of Arts. Orlandria S. Trimble, Bachelor of Science. Jalisa Tyler, Bachelor of Arts, cum laude. Lakeisha L. Walker, Bachelor of Business Administration. <laughs> Stephen C. Walker, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Shaquita S. Washington, Bachelor of Arts with honors. Sheila White, Bachelor of Science in Management. <laughs> Megan Whitlow, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Alan B. Wiechek, Bachelor of Science in Management. LaVonda T. Williams, Bachelor of Arts in Social Services, cum laude. Anna Maria Grace Rossman, Associate of Arts. Cameron Page Wilson, Bachelor of Social Work, magna cum laude. Teresa L. Wilson, Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. <laughs> Nehemiah E. Womack, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> May Slay Wright, Bachelor of Arts, summa cum laude. Kishad J. Young, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Trina Christmas, Associate of Arts. <laughs> Let's praise the Lord for these graduates' success. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this joyous day. Thank you for everyone here. 
Thank you for getting these students through their programs and through these tough times. Thank you for family, friends, faculty, pastors, and other supporters. And thank you for your faithfulness to all of us. Help us all to apply what Reverend Bacon spoke of. Help these graduates live in your will, and may this day be a new beginning as you use them to accomplish your purposes in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.